action. It was sunset when we reached the gates of Paris. Below the Arc de Triomphe, the Champs Elysees sloped downwards in a sun powdered haze to the mist of fountains and the ethereal obelisks. And the currents of summer life ebbed and flowed with a normal beat under the trees of the radiating avenues. The great city, so made for peace and art and all humanist graces, seemed to lie by her riverside like a princess guarded by the watchful giant of the Eiffel Tower. The next day the air was thundery with rumours. Nobody believed them. Everybody repeated them. War? Of course there couldn't be war. The cabinets, like naughty children, were again dangling their feet over the edge. Paris went on steadily about her midsummer business of feeding, dressing and amusing the great army of tourists who were the only invaders she had seen for nearly half a century. All the while, everyone knew that other work was going on also. The whole fabric of the country's seemingly undisturbed routine was threaded with noiseless, invisible currents of preparation. The sense of them was in the calm air, as the sense of changing weather is in the balminess of a perfect afternoon. Paris counted the minutes till the evening papers came. They said little or nothing except what everyone was already declaring all over the country. We don't want war. Mais il faut que cela finisse. This kind of thing has got to stop. If diplomacy could still arrest the war, so much the better. No one in France wanted it. But if war had to come, the country and every heart in it was ready. Cut.